CapCut for mobile looks completely different than CapCut for PC. So in this video, I'll be showing you the best editing tips for CapCut users on PC and Mac. Tip number one, I'm gonna show you how to add captions. So what you're gonna do is go over to text, and then you're gonna go to auto captions, and then you're gonna click create, and then CapCut will do its thing and make captions or subtitles for you. Once that is done, you can click the captions button over here, and then you are able to go through, you can spell check all the captions, make sure they're spelled correctly. If you want a few words to move to the next line, you can click the return key and it'll do so, so you can make this all look great. You can also, with the text selected, be able to grab it and increase the size so it is bigger, and this will affect all the text. So as I scroll through the timeline, you'll see it's all been resized to that size, so you may have to go through and make sure everything fits on screen. And similarly, if we go over to the text section, if we apply any color effect, shadow, background, it's going to affect all the captions. So something that I could do is maybe click the yellow text here with the black outline so it really stands out. Uh, if you do want this all caps, you do have to go through manually unless you know a keyboard shortcut that can do it. I couldn't find one, but you can update text here if you need to. And yeah, there you go. Now you have captions for your videos. Editing tip number two is removing the background from your videos. So for this, all you have to do is click on the video and then you can go over to cutout and then here you can do auto cutout. And once you click this, it'll take some time to process, but as you can already see, it is removing the background from my video and it will actually track me around and actually this item to an extent. If you don't have a green screen, it'll try its best to remove the background, but you know, sometimes it can fail. So it's always best to have a green screen, but you know, it does work. And with this selected, we could actually hop over to the basic section again, scroll all the way down and under canvas, we could choose something like a color or a blur. So for example, I'll choose a color. I can scroll through these colors here. And maybe I want something like a green background. So I could click that. I could change the, make it a fun colored background. Or if I wanna use their styled backgrounds, I have access to all these where I can just click on them and add them in for a lot of cool, fun effects there. Tip number three is music. If you haven't noticed already, when you go to the audio section, you go to music, you'll notice that a lot of these songs are copyrighted music that if you were to use it, it's gonna get you in trouble on YouTube. So I really don't recommend going through here and using these songs because it's just not gonna work well for you. Which is why I recommend using third-party music software like Epidemic Sound, which is the sponsor of this video. Epidemic Sound is a music subscription site that gives you access to restriction-free music and sound effects that is safe to use in your videos. And that's because Epidemic Sound works with their own artists and producers, so that way they own all the rights to the music. One of my new favorite features that they just added is something called Ear, which basically, if you like how a certain section of the song sounds, you can use this tool to find other songs that sound just like that section. So for example, I love this beat drop in this song. So what I can do is just click on the song, I can click the ear tool over here, align the parameters right where that awesome beat drop is. And then down below, you'll see all these little purple sections and these are areas that sound similar to that song I just played. So let's play this one for example. which sounds amazing, I'm easily able to like it, and I can go through it and find songs super easily like this. As it pertains to CapCut, all I have to do is just click download on the song here, it'll add it right there, and then what I can actually do if I want is go over to media, and I can literally just drag and drop this into my timeline, and then I'm able to grab this and drop it into the music section. If you're interested in checking out Epidemic Sound, you can actually try it out for free for 30 days with my link down below in the description. Any music you use during the free trial period, you have the rights to use, even if you don't end up keeping the subscription after the free trial. So definitely worth checking out. Tip number four is how to do zoom ins or keyframes in a project. So with the video selected, if you go over to the far right section, you'll see that there are these diamonds next to all of the different settings and those diamonds are keyframes. If you're unfamiliar with keyframes, they allow you to make changes between one point and another point. So let me demonstrate this for you. So first, I'm gonna place a keyframe down with everything as it should be. Then I can scroll ahead a bit further, place keyframes again, 
and then make changes to the video. For example, increasing the size of it, like a zoom in would do, and we'll move it right in line with my head there. Excellent. Now, because we placed two keyframes and made changes in between those, we now have a zoom in. So when I click play, it's gonna do a zoom in on my video just like I wanted. If you wanted the zoom in to happen quicker, all you have to do is just move your keyframes a little bit closer together. So we'll put that there, increase the size and align it there. And now when we click play, because the keyframes are close and we made those adjustments, poof, zoom in is a whole lot quicker. And speaking of zoom ins, tip number five is how to crop in, which is really easy to do. All you're really doing is grabbing the edges of the clip and just increasing the size and align it how you want. So there we go, we are cropped in if we want to. Uh, if we ever wanna zoom back out, all you have to do is make a split in your clip. So for me, I'm just gonna do Command B, I'm using the keyboard shortcut there. Um, and then what I can do is click 100 for the scale realign it back centered. And because we made a split, the first clip here that we had is zoomed in, and then the next clip is zoomed out. Tip number six is how to do overlays. And this would be done if you're doing gaming content or you're doing reaction videos. So we're just gonna be pre pretending that I'm gonna react to uh, this weird uh, stock video clip that I have. So that stays on the first line here. And then whatever clip we have that we're doing the reaction with, we wanna grab and drag right on top of the other clip. What we wanna do is stack the video clips on top of each other. Then what I can do is resize this. So I'll bring that size down. I can move myself over to the corner. And there we go, now I have this clip lined up. Now you will probably have to line up the audio and the timing properly and may have to trim your video a bit. Uh, but now you have a video clip playing on top of another video clip, which is great for reaction videos, gaming, different things like that. Tip number seven is how to do a voiceover. So all you wanna do is make sure your clip is, you know, you got the little bar here lined up right where you want the voiceover to begin. And then you just gotta click on this microphone here to record. You can click okay for the microphone. As you can see, it'll show me which microphone I want to use as well as volume. I can also add echo reduction if I want to, and then I can just click record and be able to add my voiceover. Tip number eight is speed controls. So whatever you want to speed up, whether it be a song or a video, you just have to have it selected. And then over here in the settings, you can go to the speed section. And in here you can increase the time, slow it down. There's also the curve option. If you wanna do like some speed ramping, you could customize it and make little fast moments and slow moments using this feature. Tip number nine is color grading and you're in the exact same panel to do this as well. So on this far right section with the video selected, you just had to head over to adjustments and in here you can do basic adjustments like LUTs if you wanna import those in. Um, otherwise you can go through and do things like brightness, uh, contrast, as well as things like sharpening and different things like that. And then you also have access to the HSL controls. So for example, maybe I really want this blue to pop. I can really increase just the saturation for just the blue. I can adjust the brightness and darkness of the blue in my scene. And I can do that for each color, like my face. It's really, really red. So if I wanted to, I could turn down the saturation a bit and maybe increase the brightness of it so the red doesn't show up that much on my face. Um, so you have all these customizations here uh, just in this adjustment tab. Editing tip number 10, I'm gonna show you how to do the face blur or mosaic blur. So what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna click on your clip and then you're gonna wanna click copy and then you're gonna wanna paste it up above or do command V and then you'll have these two clips stacked on top of each other. Then what you wanna do is go over to the settings for the top video and you wanna to go to mask and in here you'll wanna do the circle mask and it doesn't look like anything happened, but you'll wanna make this circle go around the, uh, around your face. And then what you wanna do is go to effects and in here you'll find the mosaic blur and you're just going to drag this on top of the top clip. Now because that top clip, we put a circle mask on, you'll see now we have this circle blur and we can actually increase the size of it. We can move it anywhere we want. Um, and then what we can do is use something like keyframes or the tracking button, which we'll just do motion tracking and we will drag it in front of our face like so and click start. 
and now that circle is going to track our face, which can sometimes do a good job. Otherwise, you can always do the tracking manually by going to the video section with keyframes and then just following your subject around with the keyframes. Tip number 11 is how to add GIFs to your project. So the easiest way to do this is just to go to Chrome and Google Jiffy.com. So I'm just gonna do kid doing thumbs up, the very iconic GIF. And so all I have to do is click on it, save image as, we'll just say GIF2, saves it to my computer, and then I just drag and drop it right into my timeline. There we go. I can easily add it as an overlay. And there we go, we have a GIF in our project. And while you're figuring out CapCut and messing around with it, why not check out Epidemic Sound? It's free for 30 days. See if the music's good for you. I've used it for years. Definitely recommend picking that up. Otherwise, if you wanna keep learning some other things, be sure to check out this video.